I'm Chris Burke, 24 years old. I first started kiting in about 99 when we got a kite and started picking it up, started learning what to do. I used to do it sort of here and there for a couple of years and then it was in about 2002 when I moved down to the island, to the coast, um, that I really got the chance to get some gear and get out as much as possible. I teach kiting, beginner kiting and advanced kiting. And he's seven of us in the country, a, a certified coach, which means I specialise in advanced tuition. Um, so I travel around all over the place, all over the country, teaching these clinics for the BKSA. He's like one of the best teachers we've ever had. You know, he's, you know, you've got to be thirsty and love it so much to actually be a good teacher. Do you know what I mean? And give that energy off to someone. And that's what Chris is so good for, apart from his dreadlocks, you know. Uh, working with Chris at Head First is great, he's so dedicated, first one up every time, I always get the phone call in the morning, let's go, it's usually about 7 o'clock, 6 o'clock in the morning. We're starting to use these obstacles, these features which we've built, where you can jump and you can slide over or you can jump over the top of. first got into it last winter when I was in Australia um, and Cool, online magazine ran a competition out there, an event, and I helped to put together some of the rails. There's a lot of things which you need to, to understand when you're building a slider. And then you think it's got to be strong and the angles have got to be right. It takes a bit of practice after a few experiments, a few tests to get stuff. Pretty much beg, borrowed and steel. He's not that competitive and he doesn't like that whole side of things. So he's just put all that energy now into the coaching and getting people into it. I spent most of my time organising was uh, the UK's first park style event, which I held at Benbridge and it went really, really well. We got about 20 riders come down um, to hit the rails. We had four or five different features out on the water, which got a lot of publicity in the newspapers, magazines, TV, radio. It, it did really well. In the early days, it was all about taking out a big kite and jumping as big as you possibly could. It's been a progression of sort of slowly one step at a time to some more technical board off type maneuvers. For me, it's then led on to a wake style sort of kiting, where you're lowering the kite even more, riding much more powered, and so you're riding with your kite just like a boat. Wake style kiting as being one of these disciplines which is a standalone sport in its own, which appeals to the likes of wakeboarders and snowboarders as a as a sport. Chris and I lived together about two summers ago in a tiny little chalet. There was like four of us living in it. Very, very common to see us both trying to trying to get somewhere on, on one bicycle with three bags of three kite bags and a and a couple of boards. Most frustrating thing as a kiter is the wind can be quite fickle. So if there's no wind, I write articles for magazines, put together videos, just doing whatever I can to keep active. The companies that sponsor me, Liquid Force and MPX, are, are dedicated as a brand to pushing this wake style image. Liquid Force itself is a wakeboard company which has come into kiting and seen the potential and they're really happy pushing it that way and, and trying to grow that sort of sport in the UK. Um. 